Welcome to another unit in business mathematics. This time I'm going to talk about annuities. Annuities from the perspective of immediate and due. What the difference between the due and immediate perspective is, we already discussed in an earlier session. So here I can directly take the value deduced in the earlier session for the annuity immediate. So basically our payments our rate R occurs at the end of the period, usually the end of the month or the end of the year. In addition, we also have our interest factor here, which is the Q equal to one plus I with the I being the interest rate. Due to the fact that the interest rate in most cases can be considered to be different from zero, we know that Q is different from one because in this case when Q actually becomes zero there will be a problem with this formula. So this formula works but only for an interest rate different from zero. Okay with those comments as a forward we can use this final value to calculate or this formula to calculate the final value and when we have the final value we can use this to also get the present value of this type of annuity payment. For this, first off, let's rewrite this formula in a slight fashion by just replacing Q with 1 plus I, because then up here becomes 1 plus I to the power of N. Down here we have Q minus 1, so if we subtract 1 from this, we are only left with I. So this is a slightly different formula, which however only uses the R, I and N, the values we get in our exercise texts. So if we use those ones and want to calculate the present value of an annuity, we simply discount the final value back to the original present value. So we're using the same formula we used for the simple interest payments or the compound interests where we had kn equal to k0 times 1 plus i to the power of n. Because here, well, we have kn, we have i, we have n. So what we do is we simply solve this equation for k0. So we divide by this expression giving us this formula, which means we take our final value, divide this by 1 plus i to the power of n, which actually means nothing else than discounting the final value for n periods. So back to period 0. When we do this, we have the present value of our annuity payment. So it will look like this. First part, that's rn or kn. So that's the final value and then we divide this with 1 plus i to the power of n or rather multiply this with 1 divided by. This is basically the same thing here. Where's the kn? That's the part here in front. Well then we see we only need to find three values from our exercise text to actually calculate present values in this context. The rate the interest rate and the number of periods. So if we take a look at an example, here we have at the end of each year, so we know it's immediate, over the period of 10 years, so we know our number of periods, the n is 10, you yearly deposit 5,000 euros in an account. So here the rate is 5,000 euros how much money do you have after the end of the 10 years, assuming a yearly interest rate of 3%? So here, third and final value, 3% the I or 0.03. Then, this was the first part, how much money do I have after the 10 years? And the second part, how much money would I have to deposit today 
assuming the same framing conditions to get the same result. So assuming I want to have a one-off payment today, what do I need to invest today? This translates into what is the present value of this saving plan I described earlier. So first off, let's just collect the values we had. We had the 5,000 as a rate, the 10 as the number of periods, and the 0 0.03 as the interest rate. So after 10 years, we have 57,319.4 euros. Then we can take this final value, discount this back to the present by dividing this by 1.03, so 1 plus the interest rate of 3%, to the power of n, n being 10. Then we get a value here of 42,651.02. So that's the amount of money I would have to deposit today. So that given these conditions, interest rate and periods, I will get the same result as if I were paying 5,000 each year. Well, that's the immediate perspective. So that's when I pay when I save at the end of the period, at the end of the year, at the end of the month. If I want to take a look at the due perspective, we got this formula from the original part. So the only difference being I have an additional Q here in front. I, then, well, the same arguments, the same caveats which I mentioned before apply here as well. This formula works well, but only with an interest rate different from zero. Well, if I have something like this, I can again replace Q with 1 plus I, getting this formula. We see again only here the 1 plus I, that's the difference from before. And if I want to get the present value, again, I would just divide by 1 plus i to the power of n. So that's the same idea as before. The only difference, I have one more q or one more 1 plus i here in front. So if I do the same example as before, 10 years, 5,000 euros, 3% interest, but now at the beginning of the year, the money is deposited. So again, the same question, how much money would you have to deposit today in a one-off payment? So that's here again, the final question about the present value. We do this again, step by step. So first get the final value, then the present value. So we start with the final value. So it's 5,000 as the rate, 3% as the interest rate. So we see here, that's the additional factor. And we have here the number of periods, giving us in this case 59,038.98. And if we consider the present value, we simply divide this again by 1.03 to the power of 10, giving us here a value of 43,930.55. And before we finish, we can see one important aspect here. If we compare this result with the one for the immediate payment, we see that this result is actually larger. And well, significantly larger. Because in the due perspective, we have one more interest payment. And this interest payment can become quite severe if either we have high interest rates, long period length, or relatively large rates. So all three aspects might have an impact that if we switch from immediate to due, we will get a much higher final value. And well, if we have a final value, which is larger, we also require a larger 
initial payment or ra get a larger present value. So it's much more, uh, it's worth much more to have a due savings plan than an immediate savings plan. Well, as I said, that's then all there is to working with annuities from the immediate and from the due perspective. So I hope you enjoyed it and I say goodbye and see you next time.